born. Art Blakey was one of the all-time great jazz drummers and one of the most important and influential hard bop band leaders. Art Blakey was born in 1919 in Pittsburgh. He started out as a pianist, but his career path allegedly took a turn when a gangster ordered him at gunpoint to switch to the drums so that Errol Garner could take over on piano. His drumming style was rooted in Chick Webb and Big Sid Catlett, and he actually worked as Webb's valet for a time. He played in bands led by Mary Lou Williams, Fletcher Henderson, and Billy Eckstein, which is where we see him in this picture. As we've talked about, Eckstein's band was an incubator for bebop, and Blakey was one of the drummers closely associated with the beginning of bebop, along with Kenny Clark and Max Roach, although he's better known for his playing in the post-bop style. Max Roach, who was five years younger, said of Blakey, He's the only drummer whose time I recognize immediately. We used to call him Thunder. When I first met him in 1944, he already had the polyrhythmic thing down. Art was the best at maintaining independence with all four limbs. He was doing it before anybody else. In 1947, after the breakup of the Eckstein Band, Blakey traveled to Africa in search of an understanding of the world and his place in it, which was something he seemed to think about throughout his life. He was drawn to Islam, and he was a practicing Muslim for a few years, taking the name Abdullah Buhena, which was shortened to Bu. Although he said he had not gone to Africa specifically for the music, the experience clearly had an impact on his drumming. When he returned from Africa, he led a big band called the Seventeen Messengers. His description of how that came to be is revealing. He said, It wasn't my idea. The guys put the band together and said, You're the leader. I never wanted to be a band leader, but I could organize and people liked me for that. When the guys picked me, I just went out there and did my best. Although Art Blakey was best known for being a band leader for most of his life, he had a notable role as a sideman with Thelonious Monk. Art said, Anybody who knew anything about music revered and feared Monk. He knew what he wanted to do, and he did it. He let you experiment, and I learned a lot with him, because coming out of the big band, I didn't know that much. Between 1954 and 1956, Blakey and Horace Silver played together in a collaborative group called the Jazz Messengers. Art recalls, Horace Silver, Kenny Dorham, Doug Watkins, Hank Mobley, and I got together, and Horace suggested that we call this the Jazz Messengers, which was beautiful. Again, they made me the leader. It started out as a corporation, but that didn't last too long. They went and formed their own group, leaving me out there to carry on, and that's how I became mostly a leader ever since. After he parted ways with Horace Silver, Art Blakey retained the name Jazz Messengers, and he led a succession of groups under that name over the next 30 years. The repertoire was contributed largely by the sidemen. Blakey did very little composing, yet his influence on the group's sound was consistent and indelible. You could compare him to Count Basie in that regard. Playing with the Jazz Messengers was a training ground and a rite of passage for a generation of musicians, many of whom became significant band leaders in their own right. Art famously said on the mic during a live recording, I'm going to stay with the youngsters. When these get too old, I'll get some younger ones. The list of influential musicians who got their start playing with Art Blakey is likely unrivaled by anyone other than Miles. Some who were particularly remembered for being jazz messengers are Lee Morgan, Benny Golson, Bobby Timmons, Freddie Hubbard, Wayne Shorter, and Wynton Marcellus, among dozens of others. Blakey set high standards for his sidemen, and he showed by example what it means to give your all to the art. He said, I don't care if your mother just died. You come to the bandstand, you play. If they don't, I'm just going to run them off the bandstand. I'll see how far I can push him, but I don't try to overplay the soloist because I am an accompanist. That's what the rhythm section is for. But I'm not going to sit back there and keep time for them. They have to play. Blakey was aware of the impact that playing in his band could have on a young musician's career, but he didn't want them to view the gig in that light. He said, I'll help them, but I don't want anybody to use me as a stepping stone. If they do that, they'll fail. Blakey also understood and emphasized the importance of respecting the audience and delivering a polished product in every way. He said, Some people think they can do a Norman Grant and throw musicians on stage who have never played together. The public is looking for groups that look, act, and play organized. You play to the people, not down to the people. Although Blakey certainly struggled to keep his groups working in the face of the popularity of rock music, he was pretty generous in his assessment of rock musicians. He said, some of our best musicians are in the rock field now, and they're putting out good music. The rock drummers are opening up things that jazz drummers are playing three or four times as fast and playing them slower. And it's real beautiful the way they got to this idea. Very clever, too. While some musicians over the years have rejected the term jazz for various reasons, Blakey said, I'm not going to turn my back on jazz. I love it and appreciate it too much. 
So many people helped me come up in this field. Sid Catlett, Gene Krupa, Chick Webb, Max Roach, Kenny Clark, Monk, Dizzy, Billy, Charlie Parker, all the cats, as far back as I can remember. They made me what I am today, helped me put everything together. I'm staying where I belong. Finally, Blakey expressed the philosophy that drove him to stay in the game for so many years, accepting financial sacrifices in order to stay true to the music and to lead others down the same path. He said, I've been around young guys all my life. I don't feel any older. It's only when I look in the mirror that I know. But I ain't got time to look back. By the time you turn forward, somebody's shot right past you. You gotta keep getting up and running as fast as you can. Blakey expressed a pet peeve regarding some musicians, namely the horn players, standing around, or in his words, loafing, while others, namely the rhythm section, were working. He expected everyone to remain involved in the music. We see them pressed into service here as a percussion section in this 1958 video featuring one of the best known Blakey front lines of Lee Morgan and Benny Golson. Golson composed some of the Jazz Messenger's most well-known repertoire. In this unusually clear footage, we see Art Blakey displaying the unbridled enthusiasm and commitment that he brought to every gig, not giving an inch even when the cymbal stand gives way on the last note.
The sound is a bit distorted on this clip, but it's a great performance featuring the other most famous Blakey front line, now a sextet with Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Curtis Fuller on trombone, and Wayne Shorter on saxophone. Wayne also contributed a lot of classic repertoire to the Jazz Messengers, adding levels of complexity to the harmony. Blakey always assigned one of the musicians in the group to act as musical director. Wayne had to be convinced to leave that role when Miles asked him to join his 1960s quintet. Now, if Wayne had never worked any other gig than Art Blakey and Miles Davis, he would be enshrined in jazz history as a hugely influential player and composer. And yet, almost 50 years after this recording, Wayne is still going strong in 2020. Blakey said of drum solos that you can overdo them because they start to sound like noise to people. But if you're looking for how to make a drum solo compelling and riveting, here is a model. Now, thinking about Max Roach's comment on Blakey's rhythmic independence, check out the hi-hat during the drum solo on this clip. It's like a machine. 